everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. So today I'm showing you how to transform a dresser that I have in my home. It is an older dresser, but it has beautiful construction to it. It is solid wood. It is already painted. So I'm gonna take most of that paint off and I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to give a dresser like this a makeover. And I'm sure that you have a dresser like this in your home or you can find one like it. Same sort of prep work for every single piece, but I did add some creativity to this dresser as well. So you'll see what I do in the video. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it and like this video if you like it and check out all my other videos as well on my channel and don't forget to click subs subscribe. Thank you for watching and enjoy. So here is the before. It was already painted from my son's room and it was in a dark navy paint. So it was too big for their bedroom so I decided to give it a makeover and sell this piece. It is solid wood, it has a beautiful structure to it and look. So I knew that it would do well having a new makeover. So the first thing I always do is I take the hardware off, I scuff sand the entire piece and clean it. And then I really like to start with the top first. So I started with my orbital sander sanding down the top to raw wood and then I always do this, but I should always start with my belt sander first, especially when there's this much paint on top. Always make sure that your belt sander does not gum up from the paint or stain on your belt. All you have to do is check it and you can use a, a block cleaner for it. I do have a video all about belt sanders and tips on how to use them in my YouTube channel. I'll put the link right here. So after I had gone over it with the belt sander, I used my orbital sander to go over the rest of it because the paint was gumming up my, my belt. So then I decided I was going to sand down the drawers, but then I changed my mind. So I had sanded down, I think, one and a half drawers for nothing. But if you are going to use your, um, if you are going to sand down the drawers, then just use your orbital sander. Then I decided what hardware I was going to use. So I had to fill in the holes that were there. There were double holes. And I left the original ones there because they were the ones that fit the hardware that I was using. Once I had filled in the holes that I needed to fill, I went over them with my belt sander. Now I always like to use the Page Plastic Wood Filler. I find it's the most durable and very hardy wood filler and I filled them in, sanded them. I went over with my finger just to make sure they're flat. If they're not flat and you do feel a little bit of a bump, I promise you it's worth it to go over it with plastic wood filler again and then sand again. So once I had decided that I wanted to paint all the drawers and not have them sanded down to raw wood, I used my favorite spray which I show in almost all my videos. It's called Kills Brand and it's a primer. You can also get a complete Kills primer. So this stops odors and blocks bleed through like you would not believe. It is amazing stuff. I absolutely love this product. You can get this at Lowe's and Home Depot and it's not expensive. So I sprayed all the drawers. I also sprayed the main piece and I like to spray the edges and any raw wood that's showing just so that you don't get that bleed through even tiny little spots of bleed through suck. <laughs> so this product is really good to do that with. Once I had sprayed that down and sprayed the edges, as you can see on the piece on the doors, I had also sprayed there as well. I decided to tape off the top, which not decided, but should always do, especially when you're spraying or brushing paint. Now, I love this painter's plastic tape, but I was having one of those days where it was just not working out for me. I was so frustrated. <laughs> and so I decided to end up using green tape around the plastic tape. It is a really good product. It never does this for me, but it was just that day. So once all that was done and I had taped up the edges where the drawers go, because I didn't want paint in those areas, I started to spray Zinzer Bin 123. Now always make sure that you are sanding in between coats 
even the kill spray sand in between every single co primer coat and paint coat with I start with 220 grit sandpaper for the primer and 600 grit for the paint and then a thousand for the top coat so here is here I am sanding down the primer and that extra zinzer spray coat is probably a really good idea I always do this because it just gives really good coverage and a really smooth finish. So I did about two coats of that Zinzer Bin 123. I used 220 grit sandpaper here. This is just a disc I'm using. Now you saw the bottom on the before had a curvy sort of edge. I didn't want that. I'm making this piece more modern. So I had a piece of wood trim. Just baseboard trim is what you can use. Super simple, measure, cut it to size and then I used a nail gun to place it onto the top of the bottom piece and then there were little holes from the nail gun so I filled those in with wood filler while that was drying and then oh and don't forget to sand it sand it off um, it was time to paint so after the primer set in wood fillers in sand those little holes down and then it's time to paint. I use my paint sprayer. You can also use a brush. And make sure that you stir your paint really, really well, like I'm doing here. And then make sure that you filter your paint, always. Same with primer, filter, filter, filter. Because you do not want little bits getting stuck in your paint sprayer and then it gets blocked. So I find these are the best paint fillers, like, filters I, that I found and I've used quite a few and I've gotten bulk in other brands as well and they just were terrible 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 so these are really good I'll put the link in my description they are on Amazon and I'm using country chic paint soiree so this is a thicker paint so I do add a little bit of water but not too much and here is the painting time I have a video um, on my YouTube channel all about my paint sprayer. I've talked about it in several videos and how to use it, what my settings are. This is the Wagner Flexio 5000, so I will put the link above and you can go right to that video and check that out. So here is what it looks like. Again, don't forget to sand in between coats with the paint coats I sand with 600 grit sandpaper, or you can use a thousand. Now, you all know, well, you should know by now that I love to add extra things and creativity to my pieces. So here I am adding some Redesign with Prima rice paper. Now, I'm not using an X-Acto knife because rice paper can be finicky and the scissors were the best option. So I was just here measuring cutting to size and then once I had cut it to size, I brushed on Country Chic Paint Clear Coat, which is my favorite top coat. I brushed that onto the paint surface and I'm using a Country Chic Paint Angle brush here as well, which these are great brushes, especially for doing stuff like this. So once I had brushed that on, I placed my cutout piece of rice paper, placed it on. You can get take the lines out by rubbing your hands over it. Now rice paper can be a little bit wrinkly, which is what this pattern and design is, so I was okay with that. I then brushed on the clear coat again, just to seal it and make sure it's really hardy. It does get a bit hard when it cures, which is what you want. So this just adds an extra little touch to the piece. These were the inside drawers in the cupboards, so you can only see them when you open it up, but it's a nice little surprise and I like to get creative. Now the, the top, the wood top 
is an orangey sort of tone and I don't want that. I never want that. So I use Country Chic Paint Soiree Paint. I spray my water onto the surface and then I use a Country Chic Paint sponge. So I'm, I mostly use Country Chic Paint products. As you can tell, I say Country Chic Paint a lot. So this is their sponge. It is amazing to apply paint and top coats on and glazes. So the spray bottle I got from Amazon, I will put that in my description as well. And it is really, really good. It has different settings on it. So I spray the water onto the wood, dip my, paint, my sponge into the paint, brush that on, and just keep wiping it on. And I also wet the sponge as well. And this gives it a paint wash over the top so that it looks more of a natural look. Here I am spraying my top coat because the whole piece was ready to be sealed. Again, you can see my other video on how to use my Wagner sprayer, especially spraying top coats. I tend to turn down the dial for the top coat. Okay, so here is another little creative touch that I like to add on the drawer sides are stencils. These are redesigned with peel and stick stencils. They are amazing to use because they just stick onto the surface and they won't move so that you don't get any paint bleeding through the stencil. You can find the link for the redesign with Prima stencils and products in my link along with Country Chic Paint as well. So I rolled on the gold metallic paint, also by Redesign with Prima, peeled off the stencil, and you have this beautiful pattern on your drawer sides. Once all that was done, I got the hardware on, and here's how it looks. I am just so happy with this piece. It turned out amazing. I almost want to put it back into my home, but it is for sale. I hope that you enjoyed that video. I hope that it gives you some inspiration. You can check out all my other videos. There's lots of tips, techniques, and creative ideas in all of those videos. I have linked them in my description for all the products, so check those out. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. So that's it for now. And next week I will be coming out with a new video, something different, and I'll actually be keeping these pieces that I'll be showing you. So again, have a good day and take care. See you next week.